Hey guys, what's up? Sean here with Shoot Sharper, and today I want to take a look at the Spider 5 Express color calibrator for your monitor. Now, I'm going to jump in here real quick and launch the software, and then I'm going to talk about the Spider 5 because this uh, calibration setup actually is a little bit of a lengthy process. So we're going to just jump right in here and get started, and then I'll discuss a little bit about why you would want to do this. Um, got a little prompt here. I'm just going to go through these and hit start. And we'll figure out how long this exactly takes with our little clock friend here. So the Spider 5 Express uh, will go in and basically create a custom profile for your monitor. Now, the reason why you would want to color calibrate your monitor in the first place is because the default setting for your monitor from everything, uh, you know, high end monitor like a 5K iMac to low end monitors, you know, maybe on a little netbook or laptop, they're really designed, they come out of the factory with a really saturated, contrasty look to them, which is great for gaming or for video games, uh, for streaming movies, but not so great for editing your photos. When you go in and you edit within Photoshop or Lightroom, and you adjust the shadows or the highlights, you want to make sure that those adjustments you're doing are actually based on you viewing the image how it actually is. Now, if the monitor is overly saturated or too contrasty, you may be desaturating your image uh, more than what you're actually intending to do. So when you go to send that to print or you go to print it yourself, the image looks washed out, the image looks too contrasty, and that all can stem from not having a monitor that is properly calibrated. So the Spider 5 Express is... Uh, there's actually three products in the Spider 5 lineup. The Express is the low-end version uh, coming in at about $130. Uh, it is pretty basic. The few prompts that were on the screen when I got started basically wanted me to know that uh, I should turn on my monitor, leave it running for a little while. I should try to work under the lighting conditions that I plan on uh, editing my photos in and that uh, I should you know, set all my settings basically to default on that monitor. Now, it is my history and kind of preference whenever adjusting or color calibrating a monitor is to go and dial down the brightness down to about 20 or 25 percent. The reason why is that your monitor is a uh, you're viewing your image from a backlit source. The light's coming through those pixels and shining out um, versus a print where the light is actually hitting the paper and then reflecting back towards you. So a monitor is always going to have pop and brightness and saturation that your actual print is not going to have. So if I am adjusting my monitor so that the monitor gives me an accurate representation of what my printed image will look like, I really want to dial that down to about 20 or 25 percent. So you can see here that the process is about halfway through. What's going on right now is that the software is throwing up a whole bunch of different color patterns, you know, blues, greens, blacks, reds, uh, and the Spider 5 is actually reading those color patterns that the monitor is displaying, and it's creating its own custom profile for this monitor. Um, it's very specific to this device. Now, I've heard people correlate, you know, adjusting your monitor to setting your white balance on your camera, which is not really super accurate. I mean, it is part of the process of uh, correct color management workflow, but when you color calibrate your monitor, it's not actually doing anything to the actual file of your image. Whereas when you adjust your white balance, you're actually changing the uh, way in which the camera uh, records or captures that white point. So the adjustments and changes that are going to happen here uh, will not affect your image in any way. Um, so that's why it's important that if you're going to, um, work, let's say on a 
desktop and a laptop or a home computer, work computer, that you have all of those monitors calibrated so that they all give you a good representation of the file whenever you're working on it. Now, the Spider 5 Express is a very limited version when it comes to what you get within the software. And one of those limitations is that uh, I believe you can only uh, calibrate one device. Now, the higher end units that Spider has, which is the Spider 5 Pro and the Spider Elite, which is $190 versus uh, and $100 excuse me, $280. So those higher end units will give you the ability to um, go in and adjust multiple displays, um, more advanced color controls. If you're trying to, uh, you know, match multiple computers, um, those higher end versions may be right for you. But as a very basic sort of no... Um, Additional adjustments need to be made. The Express is a good option for a uh, color calibrator, I think. So we'll see what happens here. Hey, we're actually done. So I'm going to click Finish. And the Spider 5 Express is wanting to uh, sort of save the new profile here. I'm going to name this 6. For 2015 underscore version one, and it's going to want me to uh, remind, uh, set a prompt, a reminder to calibrate this monitor. Um, I'm just going to set it to a one month reminder. I'm going to save that and hit next. So now I can sort of toggle between the default uncalibrated view and the calibrated view. And there's definitely a difference. I don't know how much of a difference you can see uh, there on the screen at home, but the calibrated view definitely brought back a lot of detail just in my background here. Um, additional detail in the shadow areas. Um, it went from a very mm, almost blue cyan -y type uh, blacks to a very neutral looking blacks um definitely toned down some of the saturation like here in the reds and the oranges so if i was trying to adjust this image to get it to look super accurate to the uh what i see on screen to what i was wanting to print then I would really want to see a accurate representation with my screen. And now that the Spider 5 is calibrated, um, that should be true. It should be a lot closer than the default. Now, what I'll do a lot of times is uh, after I've done that first calibration, I'll actually go and rerun that calibration with the monitor adjusted um, just to kind of tweak that in a little bit more. Um, but that is basically the process of color calibrating your monitor. So for 130 bucks, you can go in and uh, make those adjustments. When you think about the wasted ink and paper that you might do in the sort of trial and error trying to figure out why your uh, prints are not matching what you're seeing on your screen, this is sort of the first step in making sure that you're not wasting uh, money essentially printing out images that are just not right. Now there's a lot more to the whole process of uh, making sure that what you're seeing now is accurately uh, done on a printer, but uh, I'll definitely do an additional video uh, about what you would need to do from here as far as making sure that your on-screen image, now that it's viewing the uh, image correctly, uh, is going to print the image uh, as it actually is. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below. And I uh, hope to see you guys again soon. Thanks.